The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. Here's Brandon. All right, welcome to Old Space Show. I'm Brandon, and this is my yes, companion, Russell McGee. Russell <laughs> McGee. Uh, the series of Old Space Show follows the semi-antastic adventures of Galen and his two astronaut pals as they wade their way through the futuristic Earth in the short-lived television version of the Play of the Apes. Today, we discuss the third episode, The Trap. Okay, Admiral. <laughs> you. It was there. It's, I, I it's know, there. I know, You're I like, know. You can't, you can't, you can't. You have to, you have to. <laughs> hey, we're, we're going to go, go, we're going to go eight. Oh, oh. <laughs> Stop monkeying around. Uh. <laughs> All right, synopsis time. Synopsis time. When they are buried alive underground in an ancient San Francisco subway station during an earthquake, Burke and General Orko are forced to work together. Above ground, Galen and Verdon try to figure out a way to help Burke with the assistance of several guerrilla soldiers. All right, this one's directed by Arnold Lavin, written by Edward J. Lasko, starring Roddy McDowell, James Naughton, Ron Harper, Mark Leonard, Norman Alden, John Milford, and... Cindy Albacher. All right. So our director, Laven, uh, he was a script supervisor in the late 40s, early 1950s, including script supervisor on the movie DOA. He is a uncredited producer on the Burt Reynolds movies Gator and White Lightning. Those are some classics right there. Yeah. Uh, directed three episodes of uh, this show. And he would direct, he directed Alfred Hitchcock's Presents, uh, the episode there Decoy. The episode Decoy. He also went on to direct the Alfred Hitchcock Hour, uh, the film Geronimo. He did Marcus Welby, Gunsmoke, Ironside, Shazam, mm. uh, Six Million Dollar Man, Rockford Files, Fantasy Island, Chips, The Greatest American Hero, Hunter, and the A Team. Uh, our writer Lasco. He did two episodes of the show. He would also write Perry Mason, I Spy, Wild Wild West. He wrote the Star Trek episode and the Children Shall Lead, Hawaii Five-0, Mod Squad, Mission Impossible, Adam 12, Six Million. He made the circuit of shows we talk about here. Did Charlie's Angels, I think that's one we haven't mentioned, and the Airwolf TV show. Airwolf. Can't yes. Leave Airwolf out. Uh, one of the guest stars, Alden, he had a humongous tr- uh, TV career, but his uh, kind of nerd stuff that is notable is he played the guy who ran the diner in Back to the Future with Goldie Wilson in the back in the 50s. And then he was Aquaman on the all new Super Friends Hour, the voice of it. And oh. he the voice of Sir K in Sword in the Stone and starred in Cutting Class, uh, the Brad Pitt slasher. And lastly, he was cameraman Bill in Ed Wood. Hey, there. Hey, Got to get some Edward back in there. Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, and then uh, guest star Milford will star in another episode of the show as a different character. Did loads of TV, but he did star in Get Smart, so he earns my love. Uh, and The Fugitive, Night Rider, MacGyver, another Freddy's Nightmares person. Uh, he was in the X Files, and he also did Wonder Woman and Spider Man back. Uh, in this early days. And lastly, Albacker, she starred in Slumber, Ma- Slumber Party Massacre 2, Green Acres, The Mod Squad, Odd Couple, the TV show, Martha Rose. Uh, she played or she played Martha Rose Coverdale on The Waltons, uh, was in Wonder Woman and Hunter. So that's a little bit of who's behind this episode that isn't typically on week to week. And uh, a lot of the same shows getting tossed around with this group. It's real between actors, directors, and writers. Like, 
Well, where are you at next week? Well, uh, I'm a Wonder Woman. Oh, I'm doing Spider Man. Oh, cool, cool. Let's do lunch. You, well, I told you before we actually started recording that I went a little down a rabbit hole with mm-hmm. this first episode, and what yeah. I went a rabbit went down the rabbit hole on was like looking at the set dressing and the set as far as that New York, well, it's San Francisco, but yeah. like looking at that, I was like. That reminds me of the Star Trek episode where, you know, with the kids. Yeah. And the eight, yeah, yeah. No, no, not that. But I did find out that it actually wasn't over on 20th Century Fox. They actually went over to the MGM lot and it was from a different set, from a standing set for New York that they had. Oh, OK. They, they reused for one of the apes. And actually, one of the two stars um, had actually worked on a show previously there. And that that I found out from the Planet of the Apes wiki because I was oh, trying okay. to figure out. Yeah. Excellent. That's that's really cool. I like the set. I always love ruinous things for some reason. That's a easy like uh, we talked on Space 1999 a lot. What an easy uh, I'm, a, I'm an easy lay when it comes to those abandoned ships in space that look like something bad happened and there's if they're empty and spooky and nobody's on board. Like, you know, your event horizon episodes, I guess, that right. Yeah, you look at there. Um, so this one had that city aspect to it. Uh, this, was, this was the fifth episode filmed. So third, third to air, fifth film. So this is not in the first production block. Um, that we talked about we've done two of those three uh this is basically uh your your good guy and bad guy get stuck together hate each other and have to learn to work together to survive and get out this is a this is a trope and in this it's done in the most obvious of, of fashions like uh i'm not knocking it but like we see this in other shows, not just science fiction genre, but like dramas, action shows, like things like right. cartoons we get. Uh, and I, I'm wondering here because we've had the last episode was a gladiator episode, uh, arena fighting and whatever. And this I'm like, OK, when is Planet of the Apes going to show us why it's Planet of the Apes and not just generic exactly. sci fi show? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And and the other thing here is it's also stealing a little bit from beneath the Planet of the Apes again, yep. like the first episode. Right. And so, like, we're again, we're not covering really new ground mm-hmm. other than having the, t- the, the, the antagonist and protagonist having to face one another head on. Yep. I mean, you you just swap some costumes and, you know, this is Logan's run the TV show. If you like have Logan and a Sandman fall into this pit and stuck together, that's it could be that show. It could be, I mean, I you know what? Uh they'd have to probably or no, Kirk and a Klingon in the original Star Trek or a Romulan in Star Trek. Could be that. It could be, you know, it's it could it's it's a lot of that. And I'm just like, man, uh when are you going to have a chance to like the first episode, I guess shows us it's Planet of the apes. But after that, it's what do you got laying around there? All right. The, Galen. And you know, the only thing that I thought like they, we finally started to see a little bit of a difference was with the human town that they went to the mm-hmm. suburb, but like, we didn't actually get to stay there very long, but no. like they did explore the idea of humans actually helping people escape and there being right. like an underground railroad type of thing that was happening. Yes. Yeah, so we had our first woman character in there um, that showed right. up. Uh, and a yeah. little girl too. So and more than girl, one. Two. Yeah. Um, and they'll speak next week. Uh, <laughs> we have two. <Duke. laughs> women uh but yeah because they they, it goes with this of us hey we've got this thing computer we need to figure out where that come from and they they're warned not to go to this place because it's an earthquake zone Uh, right and but the computer piece are like yeah we gotta check and galen's even for checking it out so um he doesn't even think it's that bad um but what happens is um one of them of uh who is it verdon or uh burke he he um they which you know burke more as um uh peter <laughs> so uh, sorry i didn't uh, know where you were going to where yeah. i could help you there so so 
as Peter, but um, him and one of the uh, gorillas, that's the Mark Leonard one, um, Urko, they they get stuck together. They fall into this subway station. Is it a subway station a, kind of thing? It's, yeah. it's a subway station. Yeah. Um, which is a cool set, too. And, it is. And, and they and they, you know, they're forced to like, hey, we're stuck, man. Like that's it, Peter, like Peter's kind of the whole time, like the ape has a hard time. Which they do that with the apes a lot. The apes have a hard time compromising. That's a, a thing with them, especially the gorillas. Well, and they also set up like, and this was an interesting twist on that because like we did have the one gorilla that was up above end up growing through the course of the episode because in mm-hmm. the beginning they set up where Orko told him, you can't ever trust a human. They're always going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. And then we actually have it through the course of the episode where he learns that he can trust right. and then he's open and actually follows his own word to help them in the end. Yep. I always assume a human is lying, makes things easier. Yeah. That, yep. that, that line right there. Um, yeah. So it, it does take a while. And I do like the pronunciation of, from Peter of uh, solar. Yeah. <laughs> solar energy from the sun. But that was also a nice little setup that they had there with the mm-hmm. payoff at the end where Orko gets electrocuted by the mm-hmm. um, the the lamp that they use to actually use as a work light to right. try to get out from under the when it caves in. True, true, true. And one thing that does make, I guess this is where the apes part of it comes into the plot um, towards the end when they're figuring getting close to get out or something. They find the poster of mm-hmm. the ape in the cage and proof that humans did once ruled the earth uh, and he cuts it out and he hides it in his glove. That's, that's probably the, the more intriguing. And I, I like that old artwork on that, that poster. Right. 70s um, artwork. And, mm-hmm. and for those at home, it's Orko that puts it in the glove. Yep. Yep. He puts it in the glove to, to hide, to show to the outside because instead of before where they would have destroyed it. So no mm-hmm. one can see it. Just get rid of it. Nope. Didn't happen. This is interesting that he keeps it. That's, you know, it, it made me wonder if he was going to actually take it back home to Zayas or something later on. I mean, like mm-hmm. we, it ends up getting destroyed by the other general because of Orko like passing out at the end mm-hmm. because of being electrocuted. But like, I just I was wondering where they were going to go if he actually took that out and away with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was he going to present proof at a meeting or? Maybe right. it's just it, maybe it's a personal uh, thing to just keep looking at and keep pondering, because um, people aren't in the ape mind when it comes to that stuff. You're just supposed to ignore, just put your head down, ignore. It's just not happening. It's not true. It's not true. Uh, the truth ends up being it, that way. It gave more credence for him to, at the very end, as far as in our third act, when they mm-hmm. actually get out for him wanting to kill them, though, because of him then knowing the truth. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, that's yeah, that's this is a crux of the most interesting stuff of the episode because it's a lot of this. Are you down there? Or well, yeah. I mean, they use Morse code. Morse code, yeah. There's the <laughs> Morse code part. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot. There's some cool angle. There's a cool angle I liked when they were they could kind of see up and they filmed through behind the hole at the two of uh of them, uh, Peter and Urko, uh, and then. Erko yeah. just ultimately can't, isn't trustworthy enough. So he knocks him out before, you know, actually raising them through to, to finish it up. Well, Orko was going to kill him. He got this eventually, a, right? Yeah, a, yeah. Essentially a shiv that he found down there after the poster and right. was going to kill him. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those murderous ones aren't trusted. But the, the one, the general above does keep his word to let right. Galen and company go because Galen, they, they all can hang out up top together because they each have a person down there, I guess, which I guess an ape does value another ape soldier's life rather than sacrificing him to, to catch the other ones. Well, it was also his commanding officer. So it let, right. let yeah. And they played into that. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's very true. Um, and uh, in terms of James Naughton in this episode, gets a big drama, lots of, Lots of yelling from him down below. Like, this is my Emmy moment here with the show. 
that and some scraping as far as the two of them actually with some stage combat going at it down there. Right. Too. Right. Yeah. There's stage combat, like everything it's um, yeah. Over overall, when, when we, we, we discuss it, we, we put certain things together. It's a lot more interesting than it was watching it, I guess. I, I this one was, it was fine, but it's definitely, you know, like a lot of things, like longer than it needed to be or, could have had this happen and have like another aspect or something in the episode to be more interesting to go with it or to move from, you know, searching the city, stuck in the city, and then some sort of third piece to it that isn't, but instead it's searching the city and then stuck under it for longer than it probably needed to be. And again, as we said, it's, it's retreading a lot of the same ground that we've already covered in the films too. Right. And, and it's, it's that whole thing of the classes with the apes and chimps that you were talking about how there's usually not a difference in how we see the gorillas react to human beings. Mm -hmm. And so it was just more of the same that we've seen over and over again. Right. And this shouldn't be a reintroduction to the apes. It's too soon. I mean, this is, this should be, should be, should be right. a compliment to it rather than rehashing some of the greatest hits. I mean, the movies, the mo there was, you know, five films that came out rather close proximity to each other and were re being re-released and re-aired on television with uh, frequency and popularity. Like these were very, I mean, granted their, their box office receipts dwindled, the budgets dwindled, but people still were very aware of Planet of the Apes and would check them out on TV or maybe they didn't go to the theater or something, but they were a very popular series um, for, for their time, whatever that means in terms of huge popularity, but they were not. Well, I, I joked and said, we're going ape with this episode, but like reality is that kind of like with dialect mania over in the uk mm -hmm. we had a same like cultural reaction with the planet of the apes right here, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's true and, yeah i mean you had like even with the king kong film coming out or night of the bloody apes all of mm -hmm. these things were then like spawned because of the apes right series. yeah no that, that i mean there wasn't a lot of franchise material as you know, as we said, there's no. a James Bond, Planet of the Apes, and the Hammer Horror movies. I can't think of other like. Let's just keep these going. I mean, there's Zadowichi movies, but <laughs> I, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. Uh, and Godzilla, uh, yeah, Godzilla, Godzilla, yeah, Godzilla time, yeah. was still going strong. That's going strong too. But there's not a whole. You only had a handful of things you could count on getting released every year, and the Apes was a you know prosperous thing that keep going back to but um fortunately unfortunately here they're just kind of stuck in tv tropes and not bringing any new interesting ape stuff to it nor did we like really explore anything with the like central characters so like no, we didn't yeah. get any new information there like where we could like them even more mm -hmm. either and they don't have any new pieces or information to gauge their journey like we haven't right. been given it. it's just like oh it's this place it was uh when there we it was something uh unrelated happened to us and uh we got out of it so it was it, still like I, and i told you this out of the two i still had more fun with this episode mm -hmm. than what we're going to talk about with the next episode right yeah yeah no yeah, i i agree i agree but uh yeah for this one um I, I guess uh, it's our time to take our sticking paws off this damn dirty episode. So, Russell, <laughs> as always, thank you for joining in. And where can people thank keep you. up with you in the meantime? Well, again, I work at WTIU, WFIU. Uh, so you can find me through Indiana Public Media or, uh, as you well know, uh, Doctor Who doing the sound design and sometimes writer uh, with Big Finish. So if you go to bigfinish.com, you can actually do a search and see any of the productions that I've worked on there. Okay, cool. All right. Bear with me here because of the Morse code in this episode. Hashtag tap, 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 okay. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. 
you can figure that out, I'll put your name in a hashtag on a future episode of the Old Space Show. Well, was I, had to, I had to hold it there, Brandon. I was dying. <laughs> so uh, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon Forget You Wish to Written Work Wise or Blue.com. There's more from the Brandon Peters show this week, but from Old Space. It's a madhouse! <laughs> Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Olsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetershow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found.